this, this series is called Change Makers. It's about people, prominent people in our community that are making a difference, not just in their business, yeah. but within the community in, in various ways, and you obviously have. I'm, I'm thrilled that we're here back in Woodstock, in the area where you grew up. I want to know the feeling right now for you being back here so many uh, years later. What you, uh, it's, it's very nostalgic and uh, makes me feel good. Uh, we were, my brother and I were known as park rats, uh, which it, it was a term that may have been meant to be critical, but for us, it was, we were proud of it. We were park rats. We were here all the time, yeah. you know, up until uh, almost high school. Where we spent all of our, all of our days here and I'm having just uh, fun playing ball and being with our friends. You know, it's curious to know more about this because you talk about Gary a lot, your, your, your brother. Yeah. But there were, there were six of you, right? There uh, well, were a lot of you know, Let's one talk. Part, one time my father was called for jury service and when Gary and I were lawyers. And they asked him, well, you're the father of uh, the two lawyers, Gary and Steve Padgett, aren't you? And he said, and I have four daughters that I'm just as proud of. <laughs> and that's the way Gary and I kind of felt too. And I think one of the big advantages in my life is having four sisters because I'm, um, I, I don't, it's a problem in our society, I think, that, uh, but that boys don't feel comfortable, girls, girls don't feel comfortable, boys, I've always felt comfortable. Girls, because I had two sisters who raised me, and then Gary and I raised two sisters. Yeah. And so it was, uh, there were, it wasn't really that different, except when you go on in life, uh, they would have probably been the, if they had been the boys, and we'd been the girls, we'd have been the teachers, and they'd have been the successful lawyers. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned um, things looking the same to you, but has it re things have changed though. Let's talk about that. We were talking about it off camera, the fact that people aren't investing as much as they have in well, our kids. Of course, there are the, things that have changed. Well, the biggest thing yeah. that has changed is the parks aren't really used by children. Okay. That's the biggest thing. Now, we're here during a time of school, so I wouldn't expect it necessarily to be that way now. Although, when I was in school, which is right down the street, every old elementary school in Jacksonville was paired with a park, which was next door or just a block away. Uh, like Fishware, Willow Branch, Lackawanna, all of it, Murray Hill. Uh, it, everybody it had a park, and a park was important because it gave the children somewhere to go after school and be safe, and we had park directors who were there to make sure nothing untoward happened. We don't have to get that now. We spend lots of money on lots of other things for adult entertainment but we don't spend enough on the children. And the parks, the park looks good, it feels good. This makes me feel nostalgic coming here because it looks kind of the same except for like, now we have, they put this up a few years back around the, the ball field, they put up a, a fence so that the, when the college teams play here, it can be a home run. Well, I don't like that. I don't think you should emphasize home runs that much. And I, and I think it interferes with the free flow of the park land and where they can play. Yeah. Then. We've got a parking lot that's taken over part of the green space over there uh, and other changes like that. But in general, mm -hmm. it's still a great space and it has tremendous potential for better use on the part of children mm -hmm. than it now gets. The kind of use it used to get when, when we were growing yeah. up, when we were park rats, but everybody came to the park. We were just called park rats because we were here all the time. <laughs> but it benefited you. You guys, I, and this was pretty interesting to me. You were not just, you know, smart in the classroom. You were also both really good athletes. It was only when we were, when we were, until I graduated from college, there was only really one thing in our life, and that was sports. That was, that was really what we thought about, talked about, did all the time. You know, I might have sung in chorus, I might have been president of our student council, mm -hmm. I might have made good grades, yeah. but that didn't really count what kind of a sports. Where did that come from? Is it dad, mom, where, where does it come from, that drive? To because sport, it was fun. Interest? It wasn't, that, that really was, it wasn't necessarily a drive, it was just the fun thing to do. I think children, and what we were interested in, children in those days too, when I was growing up, mm -hmm. you, you had all this free time, you got to do what you wanted to do for fun with other children in open space and outside. Yeah. Uh, it was, it wasn't a drive. Okay. It was what was fun. Wow. And I think fun is so important mm -hmm. uh, and for children too and, and free time and it's overlooked some. When we coach teams as we came along, we'd tell them just like we said, there's only three things that are important. 
we're going to be a good sport, you're going to play hard for your team, and we're going to have fun. Yeah. And we say that now to our, in the law firm. We say we're going to be ethical, we're going to do the best job we can for our client, and we're going to enjoy it. Yeah. The winning mm -hmm. and the money, that'll all work out mm -hmm. if you just uh, do it right and, and uh, enjoy it. Having fun seemed to work out for you pretty well then. <laughs> and I still am. I've got, I still have fun. <laughs> Which it's is a, a great thing. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been, always been a motivating factor in my life. Now, I say that I'm very lucky and blessed to be in that kind of position. You know, we may not have had that much money. We didn't, but we thought we were as happy as we could be. Yeah. And I was an, uh, an American, number one, which is maybe so important. I was white, which was also critically important. And they, because I grew up in the days of segregation, they closed the pool over at Lackawanna. So I couldn't learn how to swim because they did, rather than integrate it, they closed it. Mm -hmm. uh, my mama gave us a dime to walk over to, to uh, sign up for swimming lessons at Lackawanna. That's another part, just like this, yeah. across, two, across the railroad track. Yeah. But, uh, the first year we pocketed a dime, she didn't know that, and we came down to this part. Uh, the next year she knew about it, she said, well, you gotta go, but then they closed it because the, 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 they were under court order to integrate it. Rather than integrate the pool, they closed it. Wow. So I was lucky to be American, I was lucky to be white, and I was lucky to be a man. Wow. And so I've had a very fortunate life, I wish, uh, and for which I'm just blessed, but, uh, and, and I, tried to do what I can to give other people those kinds of opportunities that we had in yeah. life that we had. You know, okay. with six siblings, I'd assume that at least one of you would be pretty mischievous. Who was it? And I, I would think it would be one of the boys. Well, uh, uh, He's taking too time, long, Rob. I don't think he's gonna be honest. Uh, no, he's I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I mean, one time, one time, on the way home from school, we we're walking home from school. So before we were old enough to have bites, my brother pulled out of his pocket. He said, let's stop at Stella's. It's a little grocery store. They used to have these little bit things for children, like halfway home from school. We we're walking, he said, let's stop in here at Stella's. And he said, I got a quarter. I said, where'd you get that quarter? This is before we got our paper house. We got it, had it for five years when we got to be 12. I said, where'd you get it? He said, I found it on the road. Later on, we realized that he hadn't exactly found it. But that was the extent of the mischievousness. He had gotten a quarter out of Mama's purse, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and he also, at church, which is halfway between here and the school, mm -hmm. uh, he snuck out during church and went over to the attic with the preacher's son, mm -hmm. that was Donald Bowles, and a good, another good friend, Owen Goodwin, and they were smoking cigarettes in the attic of the, of the, of the parsonage right next to the church. So he could, that's one of the things that made him such a likable person. He could, he had that uh, ability to uh, be a little mischievous. Never did anything at all bad in his life, but uh -huh. a little mischievous. So it's him and not you. I was, I was, I had, it's actually a burden to, to be too good. And okay. I might have, been a little bit too good. Although I did get a NI, needs improvement, mm -hmm. in the, the fourth grade for my conduct. I was maybe too assertive to the teacher. The teacher was a bad teacher. And, uh, and, and my mother, I, I told mom, I said, she said, what's this NI? Needs improvement. That's the lowest grade. Mm -hmm. EG good, for very good, G for good, S for satisfactory, NI for needs improvement. She said, what's this NI? I said, mama, you know she's no good. She's a terrible teacher. I can't just do everything she says. Mom said, you're right. <laughs> it was a teacher, not you. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. But you know, that, that brings me to education. That's something you've always been a proponent uh, for. What you do is so impressive. I, I was reading about it, what you do for kids who graduate from PAX and go into UNF or your school. W why is that? Where is that coming from, that, 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 that love for education? What do you believe? What is that about? Uh, well, it's made such a difference to us, and it was ingrained in us as, as children. See, another thing I was blessed with, my father only had a fourth grade education and he could not really read or write. When he started elementary school, he only, he couldn't speak English. But my mother was college educated. She was a stay home mom and my father was a carpenter, but she was college educated. And so all of us, all of the children, uh, girls and boys, uh, went to college, 
and we all valued education and around the home we valued education and we valued it not just for what it get for you you know not if our education value wasn't really career oriented it was more like it enables you to understand cope with enjoy life better to to know more mm -hmm. about everything around you yeah you guys understood the importance of education yeah. your parents made sure to instill that into oh, you they did early on well, uh, yeah and but they didn't we were never told we had to do homework uh, and we were uh, you know I think we we never sat down had to do anything it was it was just somehow natural yeah. that uh, we were it was instilled in us yeah. yes but it was not instilled by saying you got to do this you got to do that you can't do this you got to do your home no and in my days we really didn't even have homework I don't believe in homework I, I, I need to delve deeper into this because you you're a really smart cookie valedictorian you, you have all these accolades when it comes to your education how are you not pushed into to doing that I don't, I don't please delve into that for me uh, it's kind of the same way I don't really believe in practice uh, like my brother he uh, he would uh, was a great shooter, uh, and but he would the reason he was a great shooter. You, nowadays they might say, well, you got to practice your shot. No, we just go out. My daddy had built us a basketball goal in the backyard, with a dirt dirt floor, mm -hmm. and he, if he had a free minute, he'd go out there and be shooting. Is this and natural? It not, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. uh, okay. you just uh, it's, no. I, I think it's like um, uh, again, I don't. You want to raise children, and my parents raised these right. Well, you want to raise children where they have the right values for life and the right judgment about life. Mm -hmm. You don't want to raise children who just say yes, ma'am, yes, sir, okay. and you're doing these things. You want Choice. to instill. You Choice. used that word earlier. Mm -hmm. You instill you by your example, by what you, by just what everyone says and does. Mm -hmm. That, um, and by the fact that it works out. Yeah. It works out to make for a great life. Yeah. I want to talk about education because I heard an interview you did with C-SPAN back in 86 when you were running for governor mm -hmm. and in it you said something that rings true to this day about our education system and what we're doing with our teachers. They need to be better compensated. You said this back in 86 and you said if they don't the system is going to go down. We're, we're going the opposite way now. We're going the opposite way where we don't have respect for our teachers. We don't pay our teachers enough. We don't have respect for them. We turn them into grading machines and test preparers rather than real teachers. Uh, we don't do the same with the, the state money that goes into private schools. They don't, they're not hold to the, held to the same standards. Mm -hmm. uh, but we give them the state money for it. But for our public, in a particular, I'm telling you about our public school teachers. Our public school teachers are disrespected, underpaid, and we're losing good ones because they're not getting uh, what the, the quality of teacher that we used to get. Steve, you said the same thing back in 1986. There's a lot of things that haven't really changed. Like I said, the same thing about when I was running for governor in 86, I said the one problem I really wanted to work on was do something for our young black men. Mm. It's no better today now than it was 40 years ago. You know, it's still, it's still a tragedy, American tragedy, uh, what happens with our young black men, and there could be so much more done. Yeah. We try to do a little bit with uh, private uh, um, contributions, but it's not nearly what could be done by governmental public support mm -hmm. and by cultural attitudes uh, that we have. And I don't mean to be ignoring uh, women mm -hmm. either, but you know, the, the, where the, the, the guns, the shooting deaths, I mean, the kids that we used to coach, we had, we, when we were, we used to have like, uh, 100 kids a year that we'd coach on six teams. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it was a little less than 100, but um, 50 to 100. And Gary and I would, and we'd, uh, and we'd involve our children in what they did too, so, so it was good for them. But of those kids, some have gone on to great. We've helped them through college. They've become really done well. Mm -hmm. But as we, I talk about them all the time, mm -hmm. so many of them are now dead. Mm -hmm or in prison, wow. you know, they were just these sweet little kids that we were coaching and bringing along, and you could see their, mm -hmm. uh, their potential, potential too. They had potential, and then they get caught up in, uh, in bad stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, and it's just there, but for the grace of God go I, or, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm happy to, fortunate enough to be born American, white, mm -hmm. male, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, with 
great family. But how frustrating is it for you to see that? I mean, these kids that you've poured so much into and then life gets in the way and these uh, things happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, you feel a little bit guilty because, too, because, you know, I would, in coaching these children, you, you, uh, you have them f for a season mm -hmm. and for a few years, and you say, well, if I just had some way to stay involved and continue, maybe you could help more, you could mm -hmm. give. And it's really, it's, it's not, it's a little bit direction and example, but it's also giving them good things to do, mm -hmm. good opportunities to do stuff and excel at stuff. We used to, you know, if you bring your grades up, you could go get a, a, a cap. Mm -hmm. If you did, if you brought all your grades up, you'd mm -hmm. get the cap, the shirt, and the shoes. We'd make these trips to the, mm -hmm. to the uh, stores, and yeah. then we'd see how the, uh, Report cards had been manipulated some <laughs> you know? Yeah, they outsmarted us a few times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, you know, it is. It's. Um, I don't ever. I, I rarely get upset about anything in my family or my work or my business. But mm -hmm. about, I do get upset about uh, governments not doing what they should be doing. Mm -hmm and about doing, th doing things that they shouldn't be doing. You know, so that's, that's really, my, uh, I, I, now that my wife has uh, died, I don't even look at the television sometimes because it's, I find it too frustrating. She used to say, quit yelling at the TV during the news shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's frustrating, yeah. it is frustrating because we could do better. Mm -hmm. And it's really not that hard to do better for every, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, truthfully, if we had, if everybody had a little bit more of the values that women mm -hmm. have been the uh, holders of mm -hmm. for our uh, for our society. civilization, yeah. our society, those yeah. values of family and love and peace and nurturing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'd all be a lot better. We'd be better off. Yeah. <laughs> you you mentioned your wife. I. I I felt for her because I, my, my twins are four, but I still remember you know, being pregnant with them and how stressful it was. She was pregnant, uh, I believe with Helen, while you were running for governor. And your, your, your son, Michael, he was what, two or three yeah, around yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like for, for the both of you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, this, the one reason I could do that uh, and not feel bad about it was because uh, Anne was such a good mother and provider. Uh, and uh, I knew that the children would be happy, well cared for, and also knew that it was uh, a short term. Mm -hmm. And I also had a rule that at eight o'clock, every night mm -hmm. I called home to tell my son, who was, mm -hmm. uh, who was between two and four during this time, mm -hmm. and I'd tell him a, a good night story and sing with him. Yeah. So, uh, but it was, um, it probably all worked out better, mm -hmm. for sure, for our family, and for sure financially, to not, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to lose that race, yeah. uh, you know, for yeah. governor. So. Tell us a little bit more about Anne, because I would think it would take a, a tough cookie to, to deal with some of the things she has. Like I said, you running for governor yeah. during that time, yeah. dealing with these little ones. Yeah, yeah. well, tell yeah, us well, about I, the, uh, She's the only person I was ever in love with. Wow. Uh, it was just, I, I was love at first sight. And the thing I told you a minute ago about you know, uh, that we teach our kids to be a good sport first, play hard next, and have fun. I, got, I came home to my brother, my brother introduced us, told him that about her after our first date. I said that she's got those good family values. Mm -hmm. And this, and, and secondly, and this was very rare uh, in those days especially, to be a strong, independent woman. And I would, did not want I, I was, uh, did not like the clinginess that sometimes went with uh, 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 some dates in those days. So uh, uh, her strength and independence, which was our number two, play hard for the team, you know, you'd be strong. Mm -hmm. And then, but, and I also said, and she's lots of fun, you know, she was lots of fun. So, and she was that way from the beginning. She had to teach me how to dress. I had, <laughs> I, I had only, uh, T-shirts and jeans and sweatshirts and and she threw away all my jockey underwear and I used to have the undershirts that have the, the 
when I was through college, I was wearing the undershirt. The kids on the basketball team made fun of me up at Princeton, but uh, uh, she made, she threw all those out. She read and uh, and she until she that until she died. She picked out my clothes for the next day, every day. <laughs> if she wasn't going to get up as early as me, I'd say, how about this, honey? And she said, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Are there things that remind you of her, like getting dressed sometimes, you just have flashbacks? Or? Everything, everything. Everything. Reminds me of her. We yeah. have, I, have, I was very fortunate and blessed to have a wonderful marriage. What, what I have to do with both my brother, who died even, even more prematurely, but, and especially with Ann, with, I, we, even after she had her stroke, we were still eating all our meals together and everything together. I just, uh, and it makes it easier to just remind yourself of the good times and how fortunate I was and to have an Elm to have all this time and to try to can, to live for them too, yeah, you know, yeah. and and the values that they represent. So. Do you stop to think maybe they're in heaven together, looking down, laughing you at you know, at times? I had to kill my mother. I grew up that, so I can sing it. You open a bar, Bob and Hamlin, and I can sing a song for you. Okay. You try that trick if you got one, I'll tell you. <laughs> but in, in, in between the school and the, and the park was the church. Uh, uh, but, uh, and I can sing the hymns, and I can read the Bible, yeah. know the Bible. Uh, if it was uh, taking Old Testament at Princeton was a snap for me. I didn't even have to study anything. I already had it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not. Anne and I were not religious. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I don't. I don't believe she's up in heaven. Okay. She is. Uh, or nor is Gary. What I believe is that uh, she still lives in us, and she lives in her children, and she lives in me. Yeah. And and uh, and that um, will. Bless us, blessed me and a lot of people for a long time. Yeah, I love that. I want to talk about you, your family. You guys have and continue to give to so many in so many different ways in, in our community and beyond. Where, where did that come from, that, that giving spirit? Uh, well, we were talking don't... about church, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. The church we went to, you're expected to tithe. So I try to, I, I try to tithe. We always try to tithe. You know, it's... And uh, it's like just a bit of uh, realizing, how, it's part of it, it's realizing how lucky you are. Okay. And, uh, and if you make some money, mm -hmm. uh, then really that gives you the opportunity to do something with it, okay. something good with it. Okay. That's the way I look at it. And it gives you additional motivation to want to work mm -hmm. uh, because you can, you're working not just for yourself, you're working for others too and what you can do with it. Uh, Time is, you know, it's even more, even more precious than money, and I don't now give of my time as much as I used to, but, you know, I'm old. <laughs> That's your excuse, huh? Uh. Yeah. You give what you can, right? You do yeah. what you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you realize, I mean, I'm 77 years old, so <laughs> <laughs> I got to take a little time for myself and the grandkids, you know, That's and right. I take a lot of time for yeah. myself and the grandkids. Now, the grandbabies, um, Helen is not in, in Jack's, right? She's all she, the no, way they're in. All, they're both here. So. I thought she and was in, in fact, D.C. I have, uh, uh, she was at one time, okay. uh, but she's been back here mm -hmm. for five, six years, mm -hmm. and uh, like I'll, I'll have Reedy, her daughter, mm -hmm. tonight, uh, overnight. Uh, uh, and I pick up Ruth Ann from school, who's my son's daughter, mm -hmm. at uh, 3 o'clock. We go pick up Ruth Ann, I'm mean, reading. At, mm -hmm. She lives at Neptune Beach, so yeah. that's the only bad thing. Uh, but don't put that on my, my <laughs> daughter that likes it. Yeah, it's too far away. Too far away. It's too far away. But we'll go pick her up, and then we'll, spend, we'll fix supper, we'll spend the night, we'll mm -hmm. play with dolls, and we'll do all that. And then. This weekend I'll have North mm -hmm. for uh, a night. Last weekend I had Ruth Ann and North for two nights in a row. We did so th we play all kinds. Wow. And we spend the day playing, and, and it's uh, you know it's just like being a child again, and wow. and I love it. Two children, how many grands now? I only have four. Four only four. Yeah. <laughs> four is enough yeah. to keep up yeah, with, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my brother, when he died, yeah. had twelve. Wow. Yeah, and he I had. Uh, he had 12 children, two grandchildren. Yeah. I had none. And he's younger than I am. Wow. He started a lot earlier. <laughs> wow. You mentioned Gary a lot. Yeah. We were so close forever. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, which is another, like, uh, is a, a, a great blessing in my life. To, because, you know, like with Gary and with Ann, 
you've always got somebody's got your back, you know, somebody you trust 100%. And that is, that's such a great thing to have in your life. And you, uh, uh, and of course, other people in the family, too, mm -hmm. mother and daddy had great mothers, and mother and father, who I knew, mm -hmm. were there too for us all the time. But to then go through life with Gary and I having a secret door between our offices, and, and uh, with Ann that, you know, I really, if anything was important, the only time I made mistakes was when I didn't ask Ann first. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I still try to ask her, try to envision what answer she'd give. Yeah. I want to take you, you back because I have a feeling that you're going to hit us with some, some words of wisdom that's going to help a lot of people here. How do you cope with losing someone like a brother that you were so close with for so many years where you had secret doors in between? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, really, I, I, first of all, I just am thankful for the time we had together. and. Uh, and then secondly, and this is very important, that I think it makes it easier if you have a really good relationship. It actually makes it easier because I, there are no regrets. I have no regrets with either Gary or Ann. Got it. And so that makes it easier. And then you think about, I have their children, our children, and, 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 and I kind of sense, I kind of like to think that they're living on through me and through these children. So yeah. that, it's, it still makes it, it's still hard to go to bed and hard to get up, but that helps. it's a good life though, I'm blessed. Yeah, some good advice there. Yeah. It really is. Well, we're not gonna get too, too, too sad. We're not gonna get down, please don't do it. Cause I, I'm emotional, I might start crying <laughs> with you. But well, you know, I cry on the, watching the voice. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that show. Um, I, I, I wanna ask you about um, helping Nathaniel Glover make history. Let, let, let's go there because yes, you, you probably, and Gary did that together. It's probably, um, it's one of, uh, I think Gary and I would say it's probably our biggest accomplishment in life, probably helping that. Wow. You know, um, you know uh, Matt grew up, he, he and I are about the same age, and Gary. And he had a brother who was actually a little better athlete than he was. He was captain of Everwater's team for two years, but still his older brother was mm -hmm. a, a little better. My younger brother was uh, probably better athlete. Okay. Uh, so, but we were about the same age, grew up maybe just a mile and a half apart down Beaver Street, but never even knew each other to, uh, until we became adults. And, and, I, uh, and because Jacksonville, when we were growing up, was a segregated checkerboard of neighborhoods. You you, you black neighborhood, you white neighborhood, you black neighborhood, you white neighborhood. And, and, and they were, it was totally segregated. And, uh, when I was in high school even, uh, which was after, which was 14 years after, 10 years after Brown versus Board of Education. And uh, we uh, made a proposal for the association of the white high schools. We said, well, we're going to just start having meetings with the black high school student councils too. Okay. I was called down to the, uh, to the superintendent's office. Ish Brandt was the superintendent. Mm -hmm. and to the, I went down to talk to him about it, mm -hmm. actually. And, uh, and after that, they eliminated all student, the county associations, student council meetings countywide. They wow. were just stopped. You couldn't have them. Wow. So I didn't know that until uh, what happened was um, the Times Union had uh, a, a forum where they said, because the sheriff, there was gonna be another sheriff's race, and they had asked the sheriff at the time, I think it was McMillan, Jim McMillan, they said, well, what about, he had like three directors right under him. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what about Nat Glover? He said, I don't think Duval's ready to elect mm -hmm. uh, a black, black sheriff. And uh, so I was on this forum where they brought, made that the subject, and I said, well, it, it, it's a question of whether Duval is or is not. And it depends upon our community, whether we are or not, and what the, our community, the leaders in our community do. Mm -hmm. And then John Newman mm -hmm. came up to me. He was, he's a minister here in town, a great guy, a good friend. Mm -hmm. He came up to me after me, he says, well, what are you gonna do, Steve? <laughs> so then uh, Gary had known that, but from Gary had been a prosecutor and that was a sheriff's, uh, was a deputy. Mm -hmm. A detective, mm -hmm. and so Gary. Started, we started having meetings at seven o'clock in our office, mm -hmm. uh, 
to start getting to get the campaign going and working on it. And we did, and we enjoyed it and had great success with it. We beat two other. Uh, they, there was a Democrat and a Republican who were the front runners, yeah, yeah. and he was the just the also ran candidate, didn't have any, really any money. Is that what we could throw in? Mm -hmm. And uh, but he won, and wow. it was great. Jacksonville wasn't quite ready. It was like you know you move along these stages, you're ready for uh, a, a black player, a black quarterback, maybe a black coach. Mm -hmm. But Jacksonville was ready for a black sheriff at that time. Wasn't quite ready for a black mayor yet. Mm -hmm. Now, then it became later, and I think this helped pave the ground for that when he then ran for mm -hmm. mayor, which we worked very hard on, too. Mm -hmm. So, I think, you know, you, uh, you, uh, you, you can't change the world. Mm -hmm. You can just do what you can do yeah. to help th make things a little better and help us make some progress. You mentioned what Jacksonville was ready for. How about America being ready for a black president? You had a hand in that as well? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we had... Uh, we had really the first fundraiser in Florida for Obama at our house. He sang happy birthday to my wife, to Aunt, mm -hmm. from the stairs. It was a great fundraiser. And I'm still really proud of him. Uh, and I think, I, I, to some extent, you know, what you also go through ups and downs. And there's, there's progress and then there's the reaction to it. And Trump was a reaction to Obama, you know, because there are a lot of people who still wouldn't accept that we had an African-American president. And of course, Trump made his name politically by d saying, well, he's not a citizen. He wasn't really born in America, trying to show us his birth certificate, you know, this kind of thing. So there, Trump is a reaction to it. So right now, I wish that Michelle Obama would run for president <laughs> right now. That would be who I'd be campaigning for right now. I think she, even with, and I think Barack Obama has made such good comments about the Middle Eastern situation, which is splitting the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. or you know, Republicans unified over it, but he's made such good comments, he had such a pers good perspective on it. And, and I've read Michelle's book, and she's just as smart as he is, and just as good, but she probably won't do it, but I wish she would. Yeah, I, 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 she's laughed at that comment. I, I chuckle because you've heard her, her response to that before. She's been asked many times before, why she's, are you not running? She still has, on the betting markets, uh, you know, a lot of business is betting too, in a sense, you gotta figure things out. But I keep up, it's a, it's a gauge too. Uh, so on the betting markets, Michelle Obama has the same percentage chance of being president of the United States as Ron DeSantis. I don't know if you get intimidated, I don't know if you, you've been exposed to, but you know, you were in the Florida house at just 28 years old. To me, thinking about that, that's, that's pretty. You know, th this, is, this is a, 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 a lucky thing for me. Okay. And that is that I don't get intimidated. Okay. Uh, and it comes really from childhood and the, being the way I was raised by my family and with my family here at Woodstock Park around here. Because I always felt loved, secured, uh, self-respect, you know, and, um, and if you've got, and, and that I'm, I feel good about my value, so if you feel good, I think, if you feel good about yourself and appropriately and have a realistic view of life, then you don't get intimidated. You just try to deal with the situation.